Welcome back to the channel. I have another rolling commentary for you, and this time it's a competition. Now, I had to dig into my archive for this one because this was actually filmed back in January of 2022, so nearly a year ago from when this is released and when I'm recording this. Because this was my very first competition at Bluebelt, I literally just got promoted a month before this comp. So my stand-up game was still very weak. So all I'm trying to do on the feet is almost bully my opponent in sitting to guard. However, by some sort of miracle, I'm able to pick up the single leg and drive for the takedown. When we landed, I was able to clear my opponent's hook from my left leg, and I'm trying to beat his knee line to get in close to his hip, secure my cross face, and take the guard pass inside control, which I'm able to do here. Now we do spend a fair amount of time in side control while I'm working to get the mount. So while I'm working on that, this is a perfect time to hit that subscribe button. I've noticed that only 82% of you are subscribed. So if you're enjoying this video so far, hit the subscribe button so you're notified every time that I post a new video. Back to the match. Now here is where I make my first big mistake. I do a good job of shooting the mounted triangle, but you can see my left hand here. I'm holding his collar and not really doing too much. I should have grabbed my shin to pull my leg into a better position to lock up my triangle or at least to control him. You can see my legs are open here. My hands are on the mat. The opponent is doing a really good job of turning and destroying my base. And he easily sits up and throws me off like a ragdoll. Here, my opponent really should have capitalized and dove on the top position, but he doesn't. So I'm able to pretty much rugby tackle him back down into half guard. Now I'm back in top position again, exactly where I want to be. And I'm working for my cross face pressure passing. At the time, my half guard passing wasn't super great. So I worked with what I had. It's hard to tell from this camera angle, but I was actually trying to dig for a cross collar choke. Now, once we went over to the side, I was looking for an arm bar. I decided to ditch and go back to back control because I have a lot better success attacking from the back. Unfortunately, there wasn't too much time left in the match. So uh, the time ran out before I could get any submission on the back. Now onto the finals. My opponent in this match was very tough and he actually went on to win nationals a couple months after this and he was actually promoted to purple belt this year. So congratulations. My strategy here was pretty similar. Try and bully my opponent into uh, sitting to guard, which he does. And I'm in the position that I wanna be in. I'm immediately going for my over underpass. Now you can see that I'm trying to clear my opponent's bottom leg here to get into over under because at the moment I'm technically in his close guard. Now I was very new to over under at the time and you can see the mistakes starting to show. I'm leaving my elbow open and my opponent is very nicely capitalizing on this open elbow and actually pulling at the elbow to try and get a Kimura grip. This is a very common response to the over under when you leave your elbow open. So I needed to keep my elbow nice and tight to his hip and closed. Luckily for me, I'm able to keep a very strong grip on my opponent's pants and not let him open up my arm for a Kimura. Realistically, I should have dropped to my knees and dealt with this Kimura grip rather than trying to commit to this half-assed sort of over-under weird angled position here. I am really fortunate to actually have this footage and see the progress that I've made in this position in the over-under over the last year because the mistakes I was making here are pretty obvious, um, but I digress. Now, I was able to progress this position. You can see my left hand is deep in, in his drawstring, but I'm, I'm at a really weird angle. My opponent still has that Kimura grip. Now, we spend a little bit of time here. We're fighting for the position. The opponent doesn't really want to let go of my elbow control, which, is, which makes sense because it's his best option here. Uh, but eventually, I'm able to work into over under brother and then back into a half guard. Now, once I'm in half guard, I'm actually trying to just secure the cross face and work a half guard pass. Now I'm able to, to get rid of my opponent's control of my arm, get the cross face, and here I'm going for my, my half guard. Now, as I mentioned, my half guard passing 
wasn't super great at this time. I've worked on it because a lot of the time over under lends itself to landing you in your opponent's half guard. So when you focus on over under, you, you tend to get really good at half guard passing, which I feel like it's my strongest pass now. You can see my opponent is trying to put me in a lockdown, but he's unable to secure the lockdown. I switch my hips and clear my knee. And it's kind of like a bit of a race to, to get the knee line here. I get my left knee into his hip but I lose head control. My opponent could have capitalized on this, but lucky for me, I had enough pressure on him to keep him down that he wasn't able to come out the back or, or get his knee back in. Now you'll see the repercussion and the consequence of not having head control. My opponent is able to easily get to his side, get his knees back in. I tried to go to north-south to stop him from coming up to turtle, but it didn't work. Now, once he's in turtle, it's a simple matter of him getting back his posture, standing up, and he takes the fight back to the feet. All of that came from the fact I didn't have head control. Now, we both have a cheeky little look at the scoreboard. I'm pretty gassed at this stage, so I decide to change strategy and I actually guard pull. We both guard pull at the same time, so I come up onto top position and this actually counts as a takedown and I score two points. Now I'm really lucky in the way that we landed and I'm able to just jump over and essentially clear my opponent's guard. I still don't have head control so my opponent is able to turtle again and I try to slip my knee in and take back. I'm able to get my near side hook, I throw my leg over for the other hook and then I make a really dangerous move and try to reef my opponent back. I don't do this anymore and Jordan from Jordan Teaches Jiu Jitsu shows exactly why this is so dangerous in the mat safety section of the BJJ performance and longevity course. If you want to check that out, links in the description. Back to the match. So because of my dangerous maneuver of pulling my opponent back, I am able to secure the back take and get my far side hook in and secure the points. Now that I have my opponent's back and I'm in a fairly good position here, I make a mistake of hunting so much for the submission that I get both arms underneath his arms. Now, he could have capitalized on this and used it to turn into the mat, beat my head control and escape, but he elects to go back to turtle and we sort of rolling around a bit until the referee resets us. And here you can see, I tried to take a seatbelt. Uh, I wasn't you know, trying to cheat or anything, but uh, yeah, that was not the position. <laughs> so I take my left hand out um, and I'm really hunting to get under his chin and go for the choke here. Because I've already secured the points, I throw in a body triangle. My opponent does a good job of bringing me down onto the lock side of the triangle which is not ideally where I want to be, but it wasn't too bad. Now you can see that I'm really hunting under his chin, but I'm unable to get my forearm underneath the chin. So I'm pretty much just cranking him here. I knew it wasn't going to work, particularly in a competition. However, I am able to get his collar with my right hand. Now you can see it's hard to tell, but I'm trying to clear my bottom leg here. I come up to my knee and I'm in a perfect position to sit back for the bow and arrow choke. So I secure his pant grip and I take him back on a diagonal, throw my leg over and secure up a bow and arrow. And I'm able to get the tap. It was a really awesome match. Uh, that was the finals. So I was able to win my first comp at blue belt, which is fantastic. Uh, big props to the sportsmanship shown by both of my opponents. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe, like the video, and if you want BJJ performance tips delivered straight to your email inbox every week, I've just started a BJJ performance newsletter. Link is in the description. Thanks for watching.